Hello, I'm Christina Barudi, and I'm going to talk today about living with hydrogen. So my presentation will be divided in two separate parts. First of all, I'm going to talk about the sector overview, and then I'm going to talk about uh, the gaps, limitation, and solution to developing the hydrogen market, which is my main goal during this presentation. So first of all, energy demand keeps on increasing. And this is causing uh, an increase in the CO2 emission, which actually grew 0.9% in 2022. This is causing global warming, as you all know. And at the same time, the war in Ukraine had enormously neg ne negative impact on oil prices. So high oil prices, together with the, with the decrease in imports um, and the dependence on, uh, on, 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 on those kind of sources has, Im has improved the economies of alternatives. Also, the Paris Agreement asked to cut by 25% the global CO2 emission by 2030. So a solution to all these challenges is the development of green, green hydrogen supply chain. As you can see, it is, it is segmented into different parts. So first of all, you need renewable electricity production, and then production of green hydrogen, and then its transformation, its transport, and eventually its use as the end use. So you can produce green hydrogen thanks to different uh, types of electrolyzers, but I'm going to quickly talk about two main types, which is it, they are the most commercialized electrolyzers today. It is the PAM electrolyzer and the alkaline electrolyzer. So here is the alkaline uh, electrolyzer. It is the most technology, technological mature today. It is inexpensive, but it has some challenges. And the biggest challenge is, it is the fact that it is hard to couple it with renewable electricity, which is alternating. The PAM electrolyzer, however, is much more suitable for, function, uh, for sh functioning with variable uh, uh, renewable energy. However, the main challenge in this case is the fact that it has a very high capital cost. We can use green hydrogen for different sectors. We can use for transportation. It has many advantages. It, can, it, is, uh, it, it has a high energy density per weight. It is better for long range mileage and heavy payloads. It, it has a power that lasts actually twice as long as gasoline and takes up half as much space and lighter than a lithium battery. It is cheaper than battery electric vehicle for, uh, for increased capacity. And it is faster for, char for, for charging, for fueling, uh, than uh, a, a battery electric uh, vehicle. Uh, the challenge is, however, in this case, it, is that it has a, an energy f efficiency which is low. And you have to take in consideration the fact that you have to invest in each part of the of the supply chain, because if, for example, you're having el uh, cars or electric vehicles, uh, or sorry, um, vehicles that actually works with hydrogen without having the fueling station, you're not having a market at the end of the day. Um, also, in industry, you can use green hydrogen for different uh, for different use in chemical and petrochemical, aluminium, cement production, pulp and paper. And it is the main option for industrial process requiring high heat and combustion. You can use it for building heat and power generation. And you can use it for industry feedstock, uh, for refining ammonia, methanol, and, and its derivative, other chemical processing. But it has some, some challenges here related to uh, converting capture CO2 to chemicals if you want to actually use green hydrogen for uh, for, um, for producing chemicals from CO2. And finally, you can use green hydrogen for, en for energy system. It is cost effective as a long-term st uh, storage. It allows distribution of energy across sectors and regions, and it acts as a buffer to increase system resilience. Now comes my main part during this presentation, and I'm gonna divide it in four different main parts. Um, so, the requirement of additional system analysis is very important. Uh, and when I talk about this, I'm talking about the re-levelized cost concept that should be understood, the capital intensive and non-capital intensive concept, the dispersion cost evaluation, the operational and maintenance cost, the impact of stack life, 
low factor and efficiency, the impact of time of storage uh, of hydrogen voice electricity in batteries, for example, impact of distance of the price of, uh, of distribution of hydrogen, and the assessment including the return on investment, payback period, and profitability analysis. So I have provided this table just as an example of one of my points in this list to showcase how important it is to pay attention to these details uh, in order to have the best price of hydrogen being produced. So as you can see uh, in red, the larger the capacity, the cheaper the price per kilowatt of hydrogen produced. Now come my second point, the need for improved understanding of economic and financial aspect of hydrogen supply chain. When I talk about this, I mean it is important to, to, to work on developing techno-economic framework and to really understand, uh, to, to really understand this framework. Uh, to understand actually the, the impact of materials on specific variable. It is also important to do theoretical testing, testing of different variable input, inputs on the functioning of the system. It is important to consider different production methods and the combinations of these methods to have the best price too. Here in this table, I have uh, taken some calculation of a framework that I actually developed with the director of, economic, uh, of, the, of mechanical engineering at Duke. And I just wanted to showcase also uh, how important it is to see and to visualize the impact of specific variable on, uh, on the final cost of green hydrogen. So, here, the first calculation shows uh, the current leaving the solar panel. You can see how, for example, the resistance and all that has an implication on the current. Um, and then after having, uh, having done a balance of energy and inputting the efficiency uh, of the system integration, you will have the current entering the solar panel, which is actually, uh, which is, uh, sorry, the electrolyzer, which is actually in the first equation of my second part. And this, um, after having done the several steps that I have done, you can see how it has an input on the volume that's being produced by the electrolyzer, and thus the efficiency and, of the electrolyzer, and thus the impact, you can see the impact on the price of the hydrogen being produced. Here is the vital role of increased public and private sector synergy. It is very important that we increase transparency of data sharing between the public and the private sector. And it is important to actually improve the communication uh, of public incentives. So for example, we say there is credit that uh, are, giving, uh, are giving to hydrogen producers. Um, and this depends on the life cycle emission associated uh, with its activity. However, we don't really know what, do, what, what does it really mean by life cycle emission. After doing numerous research, research, I found out that this means for the case of electrolysis, that it is the emission related to the generation of the electricity and to the production of the green hydrogen itself. Also, it is important to consider tax credits and carbon costs. Um, when comparing green hydrogen production with alternative fuels and to focus, um, and, and, and it is important that the public sector focuses more on the demand side. So in this table, I just wanted also to showcase very quickly how important is the impact of tax credit on the price of green hydrogen. These are some assumptions taken from a study by Lazard. Um, and I have added to it tax credit on renewable electricity and the tax credit on uh, the green hydrogen being produced, taking in consideration, in my case, a 0 0.45 kilogram of CO2 emission per uh, kilogram of H2 as concentration. You can see that I have a decrease of a fourth or, ev or even of a half of the levelized cost of hydrogen being produced, which is enormous and very promising. Finally, it is really important to take in consideration uh, the comparison of geographical regions based on different factors. And when I say that, I mean you really need to take in consideration the solar irradiance and other renewable resource intensity 
when considering where you want to implement your project. You have to consider the water availability. You have to consider the availability of infrastructure that could adapt to the hydrogen supply chain needs. Because when you already have an infrastructure that's ready and you can alternate it and retrofit it, you're actually decreasing the initial capital investment. Finally, it is important to do some strategy modeling and the use of framework to evaluate the feasibility of hydrogen project. And I'm actually currently working on that, on developing such a framework with the director of mechanical engineering at Duke. So here, I wanted, I built this uh, quick graph to showcase um, the impact of, first of all, uh, tax credits and the region you choose when you choose where you want to produce green hydrogen. Uh, so as you can see, um, you can attain a level of $0.73 uh, dollar per kilogram of green hydrogen, which is super promising. Um, uh, today, today, in the best region or in the northwest US region, you can find a price of hydrogen of $3.73 dollar per kilogram. Um, uh, uh, decreasing, no, thanks to the tax credit of three, the full tax credit of, t of $3, you can have a price of 0 0.73. And this is super competitive to alternative, which is gray hydrogen, which is today, uh, which, ha which can be at minimum today of $1.71 uh, dollar per kilogram, and blue hydrogen, which is of approximately $2.8 dollar per kilogram as a minimum today. Finally, if you're not starting your green hydrogen market in the US, where you're going to start it? It is very promising and it has a lot of potential, especially with now the current incentives uh, by the era. Uh, for example, you have eight billion in grants to fund at least four regional and clean hydrogen hubs. And this is actually very promising because it solves one of the challenges, which is um, the fact that there's no really uh, incentives and tax credits uh, for the demand of green hydrogen. And here, the fact that hubs are a matrix of end use diversity, such as, for example, electricity generation, industrial heating, transportation, and all that, is actually important and a solution to one of the challenges, too. So now that I have told you all this story, um, I thank you for listening to me, and thank you very much. I have two minutes, so if someone wants a question, <laughs> I am more than willing to answer. Yes. Yeah. So the hydrogen prices you are talking about, is it the production or the dispense? Production. Production, okay. Yes. Yeah. I'm, I, actually, when I, it depends. So when I talk, for example, about the geographical location, I'm talking about the dispense. So when you want to actually evaluate the geographical location where you want to produce and to use green hydrogen, you have to take in consideration the different routes that you're taking. So for example, if you're doing, for example, a project between Saudi Arabia and Rotterdam, you're, you're shipping green hydrogen. So you have to take in consideration the different energy careers uh, that could be more, most cost efficient to actually transport green hydrogen via shipping. In another case, you might use green hydrogen locally or, uh, yeah, locally. So in this case, you have to take in consideration trucking green hydrogen or transporting via uh, pipelines, for example. And so here, you have to take in consideration the different energy career and evaluate the cost of transporting these different energy careers based on transporting it via pipelines. So it depends, like I, I, talk, uh, I talk about it from different perspective, and it is actually important to take in consideration those different perspective. But when you produce green hydrogen, you also have to, to take in consideration the location where you produce it. So when I say that, I mean you have to take in consideration that they ha there have to be a good irradiance, um, for example, or a good availability of water because also this decreases the price of green hydrogen production like directly being produced, if you know what I mean. Yeah. So, yeah. So if Africa has a very strong incentive for the new Africa to that. Sorry, I, I didn't hear it. Okay, so if a fleet operator has this responsibility, 
at their uh, infrastructure so they this cost will be applicable to them yes okay sure I wish I could actually change this slide. I'm not Ah, okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, so that's savings on carbon payments? Or so this is levelized cost of hydrogen being produced. Uh, and these, I have taken this assumption from a research uh, done by Lazard. Um, I wanted to showcase how, um, because I was talking about the different points um, that impacted uh, the, the, the price of green hydrogen from, or, or the different incentives that actually influence the price of green hydrogen being produced. So the 60 cents per kilogram? So this, yes, okay, so uh, there's different tax credits, and these different tax credits are based on the concentration of CO2 uh, in the green hydrogen being produced. Exactly, you get 60 cents back. So, uh, and you can even attain uh, $3 per kilogram of IH2 being produced if uh, you follow the requirement of wage. Uh, as I said he here, the credit are multiplied by five if prevailing wage and apprenticeship requirements are met. So you can have uh, $3 per kilogram given back if you actually follow these requirements. Well, we'd love to answer your question outside. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening.